Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a lovely 1970 series. Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date. This is the 1501 in stainless steel, 34 millimeters in Rolex Oyster case. This watch features an exquisite combination of a tritium Chantung dial and an engine turned bezel. The watch features a Rolex America rivet style bracelet, and as you can see, it wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date is the comparably equipped, comparably spec 34 millimeter equivalent to the conventional 36 millimeter date just. The timepiece is 12.5 millimeters thick, and as you can see from lug to lug measures a nice compact 41.6 millimeters. The spacing between the lugs is 19 millimeters if you want to accessorize with a strap and because of the sub 42 millimeter lug to lug I can recommend this watch for a wrist of any size. There is no lower limit on the appropriate size for a watch of these dimensions. Now getting a little bit closer you can see that the period rivet style bracelet is in good structural condition. There is undoubtedly some play from the years as the bracelet itself dates to 1971 and I'll do my best to show you the internal stamp. So you can see that it is of Rolex USA origin. You can see the maker's mark internally as well as the date stamp. The clasp itself features the Rolex crown externally and as you can see there are several alternative anchoring points for the bracelet inside of the clasp. Jumping back to the case, you can see that it is the classic date and date just case. In terms of profile and lines, they are effectively identical with the only real difference being the outright dimensions. You'll also note that though the watch has been refinished over the years, the lugs retain most of their volume and there is no protrusion of spring bar through the end of the lugs, and this true at all four corners. You'll also note that the bezel itself features a little bit of a conical profile as it's wider at its top than it is at its bottom. It is also an engine turned bezel. You'll note that this is not the conventional fluted white gold bezel that you see on mixed metal Rolex watches. This is an engine turning with a sort of double knurling, large polish, and then you have a strayation that's almost like a coining in between. The watch features a dramatically domed plexiglass crystal and one of the most intriguing Rolex dial designs of all time, variously known as the mosaic or the shantung. It's a reference to a certain type of oriental silk garment and silk fabric that effectively has the same textural surface. Now, it's said that these dials were created by individually weaving layers of silk over the dial blank, and they run roughly horizontally. I'm doing my best to carry the grayscale onto the imagery of the camera. It's a little bit difficult because this is a sort of grayscale and gray gradient dial. Some of them are a little bit more colorful, some of them are a bit more discreet, and this falls into the latter category, but you can see quite easily that this is something different altogether compared to, for example, a roll like the linen dial. You can see the indices as well as hands are clean and intact along with the Rolex 5 point coronet. It is an original tritium dial and you can see that the tritium patches outboard of the indices as well as on the hands are fully intact. Underneath the case back, Rolex manufactured caliber 1570. Now this is an early 1570, just before the movement picked up hacking seconds, but in all other respects, it's tough and it's accurate. A certified COSC chronometer, it beats away at a lovely and evocative vintage rate of 19,800 vibrations per hour with a 42 to 45 hour power reserve. The timepiece, originally, with a robustly water-resistant case and as you can see a screw-down crown, but do me a favor, don't risk this watch in the water, that time has passed. This is now a high and dry kind of Rolex watch. And of course, the movement pivoting away on 26 joules with a Breguet overcoil hairspring to help it earn that multi-position chronometer certification and a free-sprung balance with Rolex's proprietary Micro Stella balance bolts. A watch that is handsome, evocative, wearable by any wrist and historically significant. It's also rare as the Shantung dials are rarely seen, especially in combination with the engine turned bezel. See this handsome rivet bracelet Shantung engine turned date and make it yours on the watch box.